I need a volunteer to keep score. I'm going to try and do 43 or more tips and tricks in 45 minutes. Any volunteers to keep score? There we go. Bastien, thank you. I may ask you at some point what number we're on, so okay. keep up. Should I also note duplicates? No, no, don't worry about that. Mark them as two individuals. It's fine. So hands up who uses PHP Storm. <laughs> Anyone with your hand down? Why are you here? <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we're going to go really quick, and the first tip is, as you can see, there's a Markdown editor now in PHP Storm, which gives you a preview and a split screen, and the only way to indent things in Markdown, apparently, is with loads of non-breaking spaces, <laughs> so excuse me with that. Um, yeah, we got a fully-fledged Markdown editor, which is why I don't even have to bother to write slides for this talk anymore, which is good. So. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about how I have PHP Storm configured. So let's just open up a random file here. This is the Zen Service Manager. Um, just picked any, uh, any amount of code I've been working on recently, so nothing particularly spectacular. But you'll notice that I don't have any tabs. Um, I prefer to work in a way where I just have one thing open and use keyboard shortcuts to navigate between the files. So does anyone else here not use tabs? Wow. OK. Alex, you don't count, but yeah, three people. It's pretty cool. So the reason I don't use tabs is because I find it easier to navigate on the keyboard without using any tabs. So for example, um, we can open a recent file using Command D. That gives us access to the recently opened file. So you can see the markdown file there. Here's the test that we just worked on. Um, but it's easier than that because we can actually use Command Shift O to open um, files, so file names. So we can go back to markdown using that. The clever thing, though, is if you can't remember what the keyboard shortcut is, you can hit double shift to search everywhere. And that actually searches not only files and classes, but symbols and actions. So I can type delegators. And you can see that there's a markdown file, but there's also um, a property in the file. So we can open it using that and navigate straight there. Incidentally, it tells me which shortcut I could use. I don't know how you can see that on the projector. But it's telling me that I could have used Command-D to navigate quickly to this point, which is the useful thing for Search Everywhere. Because not only does it help you to get where you're going, but it tells you how you can get there quicker next time. That's the clever thing. Um, incidentally, I tend to work without this left-hand uh, pane. So you can open and close the project pane using Command-1, which people probably know. But if you have tons of stuff open, so maybe I've got my version control all, all you know, intruded in the bottom here, I might have things coming out of the right-hand pane. You can actually clear all windows and just get back to your code with um, Command Shift and F12. You'll notice that when I do these uh, actions, they're coming up at the bottom of the screen. So these are the defaults for Windows and for Mac. So yeah, we can, we can toggle between that as well. So if we want to code and then go back to whatever we were doing down here, that's a really nice way to move back and forth. If you have questions at any point, feel free to shout them out. I don't mind that at all. That's fine. The other nice thing I like to use, which is something I use a ton, is we all write unit tests, right? Who laughed? Hands up. Who? Somebody actually laughed. A nice way to navigate between your unit tests and the actual test you're, um, you're testing is to use navigate to test. So this is a, a, a swap you'll be doing. And this is quite often why people like to have tabs, because they like to have the test and the, the class they're testing open. But we can do that using a shortcut. So we can navigate to the test. It actually navigates straight back without asking, because it knows how to get one way. But it, it'll ask me which test to use here. But that's a really nice way of flipping between the test and the class. Um, oh, a point of note is if you have opened a, a window and you've got tons of windows open and you don't know really what you're doing, hit and escape will always bring you back to your, your, your code window. So if you end up too deep in windows and you're, oh, what am I doing? Just keep hitting escape. You'll get back to the code window. That's fine. Um, we'll cover um, inspections, but the inspections are what PHP Storm uh, uses to tell us when it thinks there's something wrong with our code. So you can see them in the gutter over here, and you can see that if we hover over the gutter, it's telling us exactly what it thinks the problem is and giving us um, the, the little uh, view of that code without actually clicking down there. Um, a nice trick is we can move to the next, uh, the next actual problem, the next inspection result in our code using F2. So this is taking me down to the next um, s most severe error that's in our code, and we can do that on the files where there's multiple problems. So that's quite an, a neat way to do it. So let's write some code. This is the scary part. So yeah, let's just, let's just, there, that looks good. 
So if we do something awesome and pass in a name, you'll notice immediately PHP Storm has told me, oh, there's no method for, page for uh, do something awesome found in this class. This is an inspection. Whenever PHP Storm finds something wrong, an inspection will fire to tell you. And the way that we can fix these inspections is by using um, quick fix, show intention actions, which is alt and enter. And this works for, for nearly any point where there's a problem in your code, where you have an intention, a little red squiggly line for a severe uh, problem, this sort of um, orange overlay when there's something not quite so severe. But we can do something to fix that right within the ID. So we can, here we can add the method. So it's detected that there's no method here. So let's create the method. We can scroll back up to, in fact, we can use function F2 to get back to where we declared this. The, the interesting thing here, you can see that these, it, these doc blocks have a problem. So here it's saying PHP comment doesn't contain all unnecessary problems. So let's use an intention. And these quick fixes are the intentions to update the PHP doc block. And there we go. The problem goes away. So these are really nice ways. Um, the other really useful keyboard shortcut, so you'll notice most of the stuff I'm talking about here is to try and stop using the mouse and use the keyboard to navigate around, which I think is the most productive way to work. But you know, your mileage may vary. It's fine. So one of the really cool things, which I am ashamed to admit I only found out recently, is you can move the cursor back to where you went. So command, I'm using command and square bracket to move the cursor between two positions. So I've gone forward to where I just jumped back from. And now I can go right back to the bottom of my file quickly. And you can keep doing that back through different files and through different positions. So this is kind of really, really neat. And now I got lost. We're OK. So, oh, refactoring. Now, this is like the real raw power. If you're working on legacy code, if you do a lot of refactoring all the time, the refactoring tools are awesome. Com Control and T will open the menu. So here I'm just going to do a simple rename, but we'll do some more refactoring later. So if I just pull that up again, you can see all the refactoring tools are under Control T, and they give you the shortcuts. If you do a lot of refactoring, using the shortcuts directly will obviously be a lot quicker, but I can't remember the shortcuts yet. So I tend to do Control T and then the numbers. So I know that one is rename, which is nice. So if we do this, we can rename. And I think probably the word awesome should always be in caps. So let's do that and refactor it. And you can see that it's telling me, oh, this is where I'm going to change the code. This is just the small preview. Now, if we were refactoring something more severe, it would show us all the places that that, that method was being called. And this works for classes, for, for functions, for properties, um, methods. It'll work for everything. So for example, um, Let's use search everywhere, and let's find the method get. Oh, that's a really, yep, there we go. So let's navigate to the symbol get. I want to rename this to be, and this is a, a service locator, so get is the most important method in this, this whole um, implementation. So if we rename this, I'm going to call it get it. And you can see it's now going to tell me exactly where these things are going to be called. It's also telling me here that the I, it, I need to refactor something that isn't inside your project. We are implementing um, an interface that's being given by a PSR namespace, which is outside of our project. So it's saying to me, are you sure you really want to name an interface that you don't even own? So in this instance, we'll say, yeah, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> that's probably not a good idea to do in your, <laughs> in your real jobs. But yeah, you can see how easy it is to actually be able to, to do these refactorings. Um, there's tons of refactorings. You can refactor blocks of code into their own method. You know, there's so many really, really good refactorings that I could just do a whole talk on that. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend taking a look at this stuff. So let's refactor this into a method. Um, hello. And you can see we've just created this method. And there it is with, by moving the code in there. So the refactoring tools are super, super, super useful. So we haven't finished our do something awesome with this name yet. Let's add some type hints. We'll need them later. Who's not using PHP 7? Anyone willing to admit? Oh, OK. Many less people than I expected. Well done. Um, yeah, so if, when we want to start coding, we want to obviously try and reduce the amount of code we type, which is boilerplate stuff that we type over and over again. Excuse me. So we've got something called live templates that can help you to do things that are really repetitive with much, much fewer keystrokes. 
So I'm going to quickly show you how to find them. So because I can never remember where anything is, we can just search in the settings pane. And here they are. Let's close this because I just don't want the highlight. So yeah, we don't care about these. We care about PHP. So you can see though we do have live templates for other things apart from PHP, which is worth checking out. So these are all the keywords we can live templates we can invoke using these short keywords. So let's do a uh, let's have a look here. Let's do something interesting. Let's do a for each. That's a great example. So all I need to do is type for e and then tab and then it automatically creates that block of code for me. Um, let's use the, uh, what did I use? Delegators. Let's use the delegators. And you can see that it's automatically assumed the singular of the multiple. So we've got the code right there for us to just start coding. It's really neat and really nice. Is it only in English? Only in English? Yes. I don't know, but I'm just going to say yes because it's the most sensible answer at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so live templates are really cool, and we've got tons of them. Um, you can create your own live templates. Here's one that I particularly use quite a lot. <laughs> so yeah, you can create your own live templates. That, uh, that are re that's a really cool way to do it. There's, there's some projects even ship with live te templates. So if anyone uses PHP spec, they ship with live templates. They'll help you to create your specs quickly and easily. They're on a, a GitHub repository. So the live templates are awesome, and I encourage you to write your own as well as using the ones that are there. There's kind of a, um, a weird opposite of live templates, which some people prefer. So if I um, show you where these are, they're called uh, post fix, post fix completion. So this is actually live templates, but you use them after you've typed something rather than before. So uh, let's take a look. These, this list I've just found under post fix completion again. So let's take a quick look. Okay, is set. That's uh, kind of a nice one there. So what we do is we, we use the variable name, and then we do dot is set, and then tab, and it wraps it backwards. So we've already told it the actual variable we need to use, but it's added the code around it. Saves you having to move the cursor back before it to, to actually, you know, oh, name, oh, I wanted to check if that was is set. You don't need to move backwards. It's pretty cool. I don't think um, you can add your own um, postfix completion at the moment, but never say never. Any questions? Cool. Um, we'll move we'll move in kind of between features and other things that I like. And one of the things I really like to use is the expand selection. So this is alt and up and alt down. So my cursor's just, I don't know how well you can see, my cursor's just there in the name variable. So I can use alt and up to select, to a select name, but I can also expand that selection through the logical parts of this, um, this method here. So we can just select the inset bit, then we can just select the whole if block, then we can just select the entire entirety of the of the function, the entire function including its definition, but we can go back down as well, so we can contract the selection as well. So this is really nice way to select the code you want without using the mouse. You'll notice I'm encouraging not using the mouse, but... <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, the, the other way that people like to work even if you're not using tabs, is you can split the, the whole editor and, and have a file on each side. Now, obviously, at this resolution on a big screen, this isn't kind of the best way to work, but everybody's got huge monitors, right, on multiple monitors. So we can, split the, we can split the screen vertically or horizontally. So because I can't be bothered to go and find out how to do this in the actual uh, menu at the top, we can use Command, Shift, and A to search for actions or options. This is really useful, because not only will this give me actions, things that I can click from the menus, but it'll also give me the options. So if I know I want to um, set up xdebug, because Derek's sitting right there, you can see that I can type xdebug in this, and then it hit the, the button, and it'll take me to the configuration right within the menu. So this is a really, really useful search tool. Um, but I digress, so let's go back to split. So we can split vertically which is really nice if you want the test on one side and you have a nice big monitor. Um, and of course, we can open different files on the, on the left and right. I mean, we can do this as much as you want. Let's split this one horizontally and then let's split this one vertically until we have a horrible mess. Um, but we can just close these and get right back to where we want to. So yeah, Command W will just close, close this one, close this one and we're right back to where we came from. So that's a really useful way to work, if you, particularly if you need to be coding on one side and you want to refer to something on the other side. It's very useful. I often do that and have 
like the documentation because of the Markdown plugin. If I'm working on a new project, I've got the documentation on the, the left side and I'm coding on it on the right. That's really useful. Actually, the other way around, sorry. We talked about the editor lens, which is the, the little hover over here where you can look at code without actually needing to navigate there. Oh, scratch files. Does anyone here use scratch files? Are you? Oh, a lot of people do know about it. That's, that's sweet. So, scratch files are little throwaway um, scratch pads where you can take notes or do whatever you want, but you can actually code in there and it'll parse and it'll give you all the inspections and intentions. So, Command Shift and, and N. I'm sorry, I'm giving Mac shortcuts. Uh, I apologize. And um, we do have key maps at the booth if you need to know how to change them to Linux or Windows. And we select PHP. You notice that we have scratch files for everything that's supported. So yeah, you can do one for JavaScript right within PHP Storm, but we're at a PHP conference. So when I start coding in PHP here, you'll see that I get all the normal completion that I would expect. So echo, there we go, name. And I can run this right within the ID without having to do anything clever. So I can just run the code. All I did was right click and select run. And the code runs if I have problems here. You can see that the intentions telling me right there, oh, you have an undefined variable because you get all your inspections and intentions like you would in a normal file. That's the power of the scratch file. Let's fix that by initializing it. Cool. So while we're talking about it, you you see that I tend to have this is this is a genuine way that I will code. I try to have as little distraction as I can. So I've even got key, keyboard combinations which don't come default to show the status bar at the bottom so that I can show that if I need to do anything, you know, if I want to check out a new branch in version control, I can pull that back up, but I can also hide it quickly. Um, and the reason I want to show the status bar is right down in this right hand corner here. This is um this is Hector, the inspector. Little man with a bowler hat. I don't know how well you can see him. Um, it looks like he's really sad, but that's actually his moustache, so I don't think he's like always constantly sad. And Hector can control how much work PHP Storm is doing for you at any one time. So you can turn up and down the amount of um, inspections and syntax highlighting you're getting for different types of files. So I never work in HTML, and anyone who's seen me trying to work with HTML will know that I can just turn that off because I never work with it. So, you know, that can help to save some battery life, save, um, you know, not to clog up completion when you, you don't need it. So you can turn that right down. We can turn PHP level down. I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Otherwise, why, <laughs> why bother using PHP Storm? But power save mode is pretty cool. If you're coding, you're on a plane or you're on a train, you don't have a plug and you just want to eke a few more. Uh, you know, a few more minutes out of your laptop, then power save mode is really good. That will automatically turn off some of the things in the background. So that's Hector. I'm going to have to turn all of this back on or future demos will not work. How are we doing, Bastian? Very good. We are at, um, oh, okay. That's not bad. I think we should be on like 32, but it's fine. Shoot. Uh, the parameter type hints, yeah. So let me just quickly show the question is about parameter type hints. So um, you can see that when we're calling functions here, it's giving us the name of the parameter that we we need, which I find like massively useful. So if I do get, oh no, I renamed it to get it. It tells me um, what I should be passing in here. You can see that it said name. So what am I actually doing? What am I passing in? So some people, these are a recent addition, and some people don't like them because they may push your code over the 80 character limit or something, and you know it, it's not something that everybody likes. So we can turn that off and on. If I remember the name of them correctly. Yeah, so there's it's right there, and uh, editor general appearance, show parameter name hints to turn those on or off. They come turned on by default. So, we covered Hector. Oh, yeah, PHP 7. So, we have absolutely amazing PHP 7 support. So, anyone who put their hand up when I asked who wasn't using PHP 7, this is a good reason to upgrade. Also, the speed and all the other memory bonuses, but yeah. So, we've, got, we've already got some type hints here. We can see that, um, let's get rid of this. And let's get rid of this. Let's so we've got some type hints here. 
we, we're saying that we should only accept the string as the, the, the name, and we should be returning a Boolean, so these are PHP 7 type hints. So you'll notice though there's no errors coming in at the moment, and that's because I don't have strict type hinting turned on. Now, I don't know if anyone's converted a 5, 6 code base to PHP 7 and wants to use strict type hints, because really you should be using strict type hints if you're using type hints. It's such a pain to actually add the declare statements at the top of every file, and you'll forget a declare statement, and you'll be like, oh, why is this not working? Oh, I forgot to add a declare statement. So there's an inspection for that. You need to turn it on. So um, I need to remember where it is. This PHP. Missing strict types declaration. So you can see it's turned off. Turn it on. I normally set it to error I, because I want to be warned aggressively if I've forgotten a strict type hint. But you can see here, you can see all the, the actual type um, inspections in this, in this menu. So if we apply that and go here, you can see straight away now that PHP Storm's telling me I don't have a strict types declaration. And again, we can use uh, uh, the quick fix to add it for us. So you don't have to actually type it in, which is another win. Now if we... Um, navigate to the next problem, you can see undefined variable name. Okay, that wasn't the one I was expecting. Let's fix that though while we're here. You can see that the problems have been picked up now. You can see straight away that it's there's a problem here saying return type value must be of the type bool and I'm returning an int. So we can fix that and it's the same here. We're returning a string and we can fix that. Uh, it also obviously works if we're calling this um, do something awesome and we're calling it with a an int. You know, it works for, for the, the actual type ins and the return type ins, the, the um, scalar type ins too. So that's a really, really nice way. And if you are going to upgrade and if you are going to turn on this declare strict types equals one for all your files, which I highly recommend you do, um, you don't have to do that by hand because we can run any of the inspections I've shown you across all or part of the code base by using run inspection by name. So I can't remember the keyboard shortcut. Alt, Shift, Command, I. Alt, Shift, Command. There you go. Um, but we, you can see that we can run any of the inspections that run on your code base against part of, or all of your code base at any time. So if we run this inspection against the whole project, including tests, why not? You can see that there's 101 problems. This project doesn't have strict type declaration on, on any of the files. Now we can look at them one by one and then click the button to add declare strict types equals one, but why bother? Because we can just click this button and fix it all in all the files in one go, which is amazing if you have ever needed to upgrade a five, six project to seven. That is like super cool. It works for any of the inspections. Any of the inspections you find when you hover over them, you can run them by name on the code base. So there's other things it's really useful to run this for. Things like um, if you want to convert all array, old, or long array syntax to short array syntax on your code base, works like a charm for that. Yeah, shoot. Uh, minor point, but fixed doesn't actually, um, isn't PSR2 compliant with the white space? There, there isn't uh, a PSR2 covering declare statements at the moment. Um, there's a new PSR coming out that will cover the PHP 7 stuff. I don't think it's released yet, but correct me if I'm wrong. But once there's a standard, we'll support the standard, obviously. Shoot. It's, it, the, the declare will not actually work unless it's the first line of the file. So the standard's wrong in this instance, sadly, <laughs> because there's, there's no way you can put a declare statement unless it's the top of the file. Um, okay, well, whatever. I, I have another, like, 30 things to cover or something, so, yeah, we're all good. How are we looking for time? Oh, okay, so we're doing okay. So yeah, we covered um, run inspection by name. Um, I do want to mention uh, command N, which is the the Git log, the Git of uh, Git. I should say version control, but I guess everybody uses Git. So, oh, okay, sorry. 
it works for VCS and for Git and for Mercurial, so I will refer to it as Git integration, but I should be saying VCS integration. I apologize in advance. So you can see these are all the files we've changed. So this is, there's two tabs here which are really interesting. The local changes, we can have change logs, and we can move stuff into different change logs if we don't want to commit them, because you, you have a full um, VCS uh, integration right within the ID. The log is kind of the more useful thing. I tend to use this to visualize um, how things have branched and where they've merged. This is really neat. If you have done something like really bad though and you've not committed it to Git, it's okay because we actually have a local history built into the, into the ID. So this is totally independent of your version control system. So if you don't even have a version control system, and I'm not going to ask anyone to own up to that, um, but you still have uh, a full local history inside the ID. So you can see all the changes here. I mean, we can revert back to the beginning of this talk and re just revert all the stuff I've just done, which is cool. So if you make a big faux pas and you've forgotten to commit to VCS, you know, don't worry too much. Just take a look in, in local history. OK. Uh, the other, my, my probably the favorite thing I ever found inside the ID is hidden under the tools menu under the test restful web service. Anyone know what this does and use it? One person, two people? Yeah, I know you know, Alex, it's fine. We can, this, this is like a fully fledged um, HTTP client right within your ID. So you don't need to use like curl, you don't need to use Postman or whatever, it's right there in your ID. So if you're right in, it says RESTful web service, but this is just a fully fledged HTTP client. It's nothing to do really with RESTful service. So I've just got the joined in API here, because um, that's the de facto thing that speakers use when they want to demo an API. Uh, version 2.1 event, and we're doing a GET request, so we can just play that, and thankfully we're still on the, <laughs> the Wi-Fi, so it they, they worked. And you can see we've got our response right here. We can, we can look at the response headers, we can add headers, we can add cookies. Um, we can format the response nicely, and I'm going to talk as it takes a couple of seconds to do that. But right there within your ID, you've got a, a REST client, which is super, super useful. The externals tool stuff is also something I find really, really handy. So if anybody uses something like PHP mess detector, you can use that right within the ID to have the inspections from mess detection. But a lot of people like myself like to run that just pre-commit. So I don't like to have it as part of your actual coding workflow, but to run it as part of your commit process. And we can set up external tools to be able to run them within the ID without leaving the ID. So in this instance, Let's take a look. In this instance, I have PHP CS set up here, PHP Code Sniffer. So I'm, I've set it up. I've just told it where to find PHP Code Sniffer. And I've said to run it on the, the project file which is a shortcut that you can use to, say, the project root, basically. And I've added it to a, as an external tool. Now, if I go to Tools, External Tools, PHP CS, we're probably going to get a ton of errors. Yeah. Don't judge me, but we've just run the code from right within your ID, the, the command line stuff. Now, you can also, um, any of the external tools, you can just bind them to shortcuts. So if you do a lot, run a lot of external tools and you don't want to leave your ID, you know, you can do that right there. Command, Shift, Alt, K. Why did I bind it to that? There we are. It works, though. It's fine. We get into the part, as you'll notice, how I'm telling you how you don't need to leave your IDE, so we should really cover the terminal. Um, and how I typically get to the terminal is to use Command Tab, keep my finger on Control, and then hit T to open the terminal. So you can see we've just got a terminal right in our IDE, which, you know, that's no great shakes. But the, the really cool thing is that you can add new tabs. So these, these tabs can be, um, can be named. You can have different tabs. If you do use tabs in your IDE, let's turn tabs on quickly. I guess we're doing okay for time now, uh, Bastian, right? Well, there we go. Excellent. So we can turn the tabs back on. We can put them at the top. And these terminal tabs can then be docked into your normal, um, yeah, if I didn't actually drop it in the wrong place. They can be docked right within your actual ID. So if you do use tabs, you can actually dock any of the pings that, that also support tabs straight into your normal um, tab workflow. I'm going to turn those back off because it's not for me.
Um, oh, okay. So, does anyone here work front end, do sort of HTML, CSS, JavaScript editing? Yeah? A few people. This is kind of a nice feature. Um, so, let's open a different project now. I'm going to move here. This is um, Bolt CMS. So, this is kind of a, 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 kind of a really nice CMS built on Silex, I think. So, but this is a, a nice way for me to demo. So, this is just a HTML file. So, I'm just going to show you some quick sort of front end tips since we've covered some PHP stuff. So, I can open this in my browser in debug mode, and you'll see that it says JetBrains ID support is debugging this browser. I've got the JetBrains extension installed. It's just a Chrome extension that allows this connection to happen. So if I send that over to the right, please. And then I send that there, and then let's open PHP Storm. And the right window. And let's send that over to the left. You can see that when I click on things here, we've got a live editing situation going on where changes I make to the HTML are being reflected in the actual browser to the right. So I can say, hello, and you can see it's just updating on the right-hand side. This is really nice. It's really nice for things like color pickers and stuff. You can, you know, we can even change some of the CSS. Um, this is really like stretching my knowledge of CSS and front-end stuff, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> we can like choose color. Uh, let's set it to, that's a nice color, let's set it to that. And you can see that it's updated on the right hand side immediately. So this is really, really neat way to work. Um, and while we're talking about front end, the stuff that we've covered in live templates, we also have in the front end. So we have something called Emmet, which gives us the same thing. And what this means is you can create your HTML structure without actually needing to op type the open tags and type the close tab. So a decent way to demo this is, let's do a div, um, with some lorem filler in there, and let's do three of them. Oh, and then tab, and you can see that it's created three divs with some lorem filler right in there. So we have this way of quickly creating content in the front end. Um, I'm gonna move up here and do UL, oh no, I nearly did it the old fashioned way, excuse me. Li times five, and we get five allies. What if I wanna like, add something which starts the same to each of these allies. We've got multiple cursor support. So I can just press Alt to create extra cursors and then start typing. And you can see that we have full multiple cursor. Now this isn't a HTML thing. This works for PHP for any of the editors. Um, but this is really, really neat for when you want to like do <laughs> the same thing multiple times. How Shoot. The completion work first? Um, good question. How does the completion work? Should we find out? Let's do it. It's fine. So escape takes you back out of multiple cursor mode because you could get into multiple cursor hell, which is not so good. Uh, let's try some completion. Yeah, why not? Uh, OK. Hold on. Oh, it just works perfectly. Why did I ever doubt it? Of course it just works perfectly. <laughs> Superb. Thanks for the question. Are we over the limit yet? OK, I finished. No. <laughs> yeah, shoot. OK. I don't know. <laughs> Come to the booth after Alex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is Sublime Text? Uh, sorry, Alex is the, the project lead, so this is kind of scary for me, but it's all good. It's fine. Um, yeah. Come, come to the booth after, and we can, uh, we, can, we can talk about that. That's fine. So anyone not use Step Debugging? Um, I really, when I ask this, I'm not trying to embarrass or shame anyone. I'm just trying to gauge how many people use what features. So. Does anyone, who uses step debugging? Okay, that's a better way of phrasing it, cool. So step debugging is awesome. There's um, a recording on the, uh, our YouTube channel um, which gives you a great introduction to step debugging. I'm not gonna kind of go into all the ins and outs of configuring it, but what I am going to do is to quickly show you step debugging because we are running out of time and if I'm not gonna go in depth then 
so let's get back to so this is just a this is just a symphony app um apparently a very badly configured symphony app but we'll ignore that for the moment it's fine so what we can do is we can step by step debug the code so instead of having to do var dump dies everywhere we can actually step in and see the state of our application at every step so this is kind of cool so all we need to do is to set a breakpoint somewhere uh, let's set it here and then listen for connections and then I go back to my browser I make sure that um, we've got debugging enabled in the browser. It's a two-step process. I explain why in the video, so I just would encourage you to look at the video. Um, or come and find me in the booth tomorrow if you want to you know, talk about this more. And then when we refresh, you can see the app has stopped, and we can see exactly the state of the application right at this point. So this loader variable has been created and initialized, and we can look at the state of this. This is a composer autoload class loader class, and we can take a look at it. Um, we can step you know, into functions, step back out, step over, you know, everything you would expect if you've done step debugging is pretty cool. And we also have a console, which is awesome too. Let me get to somewhere where I actually know. There we go. So let's step over that. So we've got a kernel. Now I have a console. And this, this works very similar to like Firebug or Chrome Dev Tools. If you're doing JavaScript debugging, you can just look at what's going on and, and run stuff. So for example, I can call a setter on this um, and break everything but I can do that if I want to test before resuming execution. So the debugger is an amazing um, thing to use, and if you don't use it, I really recommend you give it a try. Okay, we're on the home straight, I think, because I... Seven minutes, excellent. So, let's go back to uh, the Bolt CMS, and let's maximize this. The other thing that we have built in, which is super useful, because, hey, you don't need to leave your ID ever, is the database a browser. So we get this from, there's a fully fledged database tool, DataGrip, and we get the majority of the functionality right within the ID. So I just use Control Tab again and then D to open the database. This is kind of the way I navigate through the panes. And you can see that we, we're connected to, uh, to a database here. And we can browse the tables as you would expect. We can edit the tables, you know, as you, everything you'd expect in a database browser. We've got it right here in the ID. Um, we've got a console so we can write broken SQL queries. Um, you know, we can pull those things out. But once you've got the actual uh, database configured, it means that you can get completion on your database from right within your ID. So if you're writing SQL queries by hand, um, then you, you, know, you can absolutely do that. So I'm just opening a random PHP file here. We can say SQL equals uh, select star. Oh start from and then we've got completion right within our ID because we've configured the database browser so this is really useful where name equals blah, blah, whatever um, and it, it, there's an interesting thing about code completion because we can use a, a concept called language injections to have code completion from a different context from the context we're in now and that sounds like really weird but it's really useful Excuse me. So, for example, if we say dollar script equals window dot, and we want to have JavaScript completion in here because we're working in PHP, but we want to create a string that contains JavaScript, we can do that right in here. So, again, we use an alt and enter for the quick fixes, and we can inject language or reference. So, let's say that this string is going to be JavaScript. So, we've done that now, and now we can have full completion on JavaScript inside our PHP file, inside a string or a, or a here doc. So, this is really, really useful. Um, it can be painful because you need to do this every time you open the file, or if somebody else is contributing to your project and they also want to have this functionality. So, for example, um, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. No, let's do HTML because my CSS is absolutely terrible. So we're, we're creating some HTML, and we want to have the HTML features right, right in here. We can do that. And we can do it for everybody by using a PHP doc to tell PHP Storm what language this is in this string. So in this instance, it's HTML. And now you can see straight away that we are getting HTML completion inside of our string. So this is super useful if, you, if you're doing sort of mixed type work. Yeah, please do. Shoot. 
How do you wrap a variable with a function? Oh, okay. Um, so you could do that. So if you wanted to, for example, apply string to lower to this string, yeah, you you want to be able to do that using a surround with. Yeah. yeah. So you can you can surround with, which is command alt and t, and this lets you surround stuff. Um, you can create your own surround with live templates, which is a bit too much in depth for this kind of quick paced talk, but I can definitely show you. So for example, I've got my own live template here, try catch. So I can surround this code with a try catch block, um, which is just something I wrote myself to surround code with a, uh, a block quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah, this was just slightly different, which is why it's called better try catch, because it's like, <laughs> not that it's better than the default, just the way that I work, it's useful to me. Um, but yeah, you can, you can create your own um, live templates that are, live, that are surround with enabled, which you can do from the same live templates place. So any other questions before we hit the home straight? How are we looking, Bastian, for? Um, we are OK, that's not bad, 54, OK. So let's go back to, so we're working, um, I'm only going to show you this because it, it was released in 2017.1, I think, don't quote me, um, but we now support multiple projects because loads of people were saying, oh, I love PHP Storm, but I'd like to be able to open more than one project in, in, a, in a, a single Chrome. So we can do that now. So if we go to file, open, and this is where I show you how many half completed projects I have. Um, but we can open all some here. And if we say opening current window, you can now add it to the currently open project. Um, there is a caveat, so you can see his index in here, but there is a caveat. The, the top project, the first project, will always be the parent and will always have the settings. So if you have code style settings, for example, and you use reformat code, which I haven't even remembered to mention, but is awesome, um, you can reformat your code to the coding standard you've set using one keyboard shortcut. You can see everything will change. It'll only take the settings from this top um, this top item. So just to be aware, because obviously you can't have project level settings for multiple different projects that are in one one Chrome. So that's nice. Shoot. Can you do that across different IDs like IntelliJ and PHP Storm projects in one? Yeah. I, oh, mm, if you're using IntelliJ, you're using IntelliJ Ultimate for P coding in PHP. Um, yes, it will. You, you definitely would be able to open it. Of course, you would, but you wouldn't get any of the IntelliJ features in PHP Storm, obviously. But you, you definitely would be able to open it. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Shoot. Yes. Because they are project level settings, so that you can only have one set of project level settings. You can't have multiple project level settings because they are the root um, file. So it's just not you. In that scenario, you'd have to have two different um, instances of PHP Storm opened in the way you would have before this update. So the last thing I think, um, looking at the time, that I'm going to show you is. Definitely one of my favorite things, which is the productivity guide. I think I've said everything is one of my favorite things. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so the productivity guide under the help menu. While we're in the help menu, so many people don't realize you can just submit a support request. You pay for PHP Storm, you get support. You can open a support ticket if you're having difficulties. Um, or you know, tweet at me if they're general questions. But if they're genuine technical support requests, you, know, you can do that. Just open up and, and create a support request. But I love the productivity guide. So this tells you um, which features of PHP Storm you use and how often you use them. So this is kind of fun to compare with um, compare with your, your colleagues or your friends, your coworkers. Uh, don't judge me on these because this isn't my daily working um, setup for what I actually use to code. This is all one I use for demoing. But you can see that you can order them by used, which is really cool. So it's really cool for you to see and for me to see exactly how many times I use all these features. But more usefully, if you've got a spare 10 minutes before you go home, you're like, oh, I wonder what features of PHP Storm I don't even know exist. This is a really good way to find them. 
because you can order them by used and you can see straight away what stuff I've never used since I've installed this version. So um, let's take a look at anything that looks interesting here. A uh, quick definition lookup. There you go. And it'll tell you right down here how you can do that. So you can use command space or view quick definition to quickly review definition or content of the symbol at the caret without the need to open it in a new editor tab. So effectively, I can do alt space to see exactly what boot exception is. It's telling me the file name and it's telling me a little peek, sneak preview into that class. So it's a really nice way for you to be able to... Um, Find stuff that you didn't even know existed. It's you know really cool. Any more questions? Okay, I won't keep you from your beer anymore. Thank you very much. And if you have any other questions, come and find us at the booth. <laughs> oh, how many did we do? Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. That's not bad. It's not bad. Oh, and under promise, over deliver. <laughs> <laughs>